everybody welcome back to my channel the medieval reader so as you can tell I am outside I am in my family's garden and today I want to talk about my 2017 booktubeathon TBR I have never participated in booktubeathon before but I love Ariel Bassett's I love the idea behind this read-along I've watched for the last three or four years a number of people do this challenge and love it so I'm really really excited to participate this year so the first book read a book with a person on the cover so actually there are a lot of books on my TBR that have people on the cover but the one I'm going to start with is Plato Symposium and the death of Socrates so first of all isn't the cover beautiful so the painting on the front is Aristotle and Plato by Raphael, who was a 16th century Renaissance artist. And it's in these wonderful Wordsworth Classics editions, which I know a lot of students in the UK are assigned Wordsworth Classics books. And so because it reminds them of school, they're not the biggest fan. But I think that they're wonderful editions. They're also fairly cheap, so. I was excited about this, so let's read the back together, shall we? In Symposium, a group of Athenian aristocrats attend a party and talk about love, until the drunken Alcibiades bursts in and decides to discuss Socrates instead. Symposium gives an unsurpassed picture of the sparkling society that was Athens at the height of her empire. The setting of the other dialogues is more somber. Socrates is put on trial for impiety and sentenced to death. Euthyphro discusses the nature of piety. Apology is Socrates' speech in his own defense. Crito explains his refusal to escape punishment, and Phaedo gives an account of Socrates' last day. These dialogues have never been offered in one volume before. So the five dialogues are Symposium, Euthyphro, Apology, Crito, and Phaedo. So, there we go. Second challenge, read a hyped book. This book is so, so hyped. This is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. I have heard so many people talk about how great this book is. I have to say, if I were to write a book and be an author, I would definitely want to publish my books anonymously. I think it's really cool that not only do we not know her real name. We actually don't know, we don't know who she is. We don't know what she looks like. I think this is so cool. I, I love the idea of publishing anonymously under a pseudonym, just no one knowing who you are and just loving your books for what they are. So that's awesome. From one of Italy's most acclaimed authors comes this ravishing and generous hearted novel about a friendship that lasts a lifetime. The story of Elena and Lilla begins in the 1950s in a poor but vibrant neighborhood on the outskirts of Naples. Growing up on these tough streets, the two girls learn to rely on each other ahead of anyone or anything else, as their friendship, beautifully and meticulously rendered, becomes a not always perfect shelter from hardship. Ferrante has created a memorable portrait of two women, but my brilliant friend is also the story of a nation. Through the lives of Elena and Lila, Ferrante gives her readers the story of a neighborhood, a city, and a country undergoing momentous change. So My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante also has people on the cover, but this is my hyped book. I, the last hyped book I read, I actually was kind of disappointed with, um, Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders. I haven't talked about it on here yet, but I, I was pretty disappointed. So I'm hoping this is better. Third challenge, read a book in one day. Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. I bought this at a charity shop at Goodwill for 25 cents. So, oh, it's really, really cheap. It's also in these very cheap editions, Dover Thrift. I read some of Shakespeare's plays when I was in high school, mostly his tragedies. I didn't really like them so much. It might have been because the English was difficult for me to understand. But then I saw a masterpiece theater adaptation of King Richard III, of Richard III, I think this was called, Richard III. And I loved it, and I wanted to read his histories, and I thought maybe I'll really like his histories more. So I'm beginning with Julius Caesar. Based on Plutarch's account of the lives of Brutus, Julius Caesar, and Mark Antony, 
Julius Caesar was the first of Shakespeare's Roman history plays. Presented for the first time in 1599, the play reveals the great dramatist's consummate ability to explore and express the most profound human emotions and instincts. In addition to its compelling insights into the human nature, into the human condition, sorry, Julius Caesar is also superb drama, as Brutus, Cassius, and the other conspirators hatch a plot to overthrow Caesar, dictator of Rome. After Caesar is assassinated, Mark Antony cleverly turns the crowd against the conspirators in one of the most famous speeches in literature. In the civil war that follows, the forces of Mark Antony and Octavius Caesar eventually win out over the armies of Cassius and Brutus. Humiliated and desperate, both conspirators choose to end their lives. These tragic events unfold in a riveting dramatic spectacle that also raises profound questions about power, government, ethics, and loyalty. Doesn't this sound so good? It does. It deals with all of the questions that I found particularly fascinating. Um, okay, so the fourth challenge is read about a character that is very different from you. So for that, I chose Une Tempête by Aimé Césaire. So Aimé Césaire is an author from Martinique, which is in the Caribbean. Um, he writes in French. Uh, and this is a Caribbean adaptation of William Shakespeare's Tempest. Now, I've never read the original, but I am very excited to read this. It deals with a ship. It deals with a shipwreck. These are the kind of stuff I love. I love books with ships. Moby Dick, Gulliver's Travels. I'm currently reading Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad. I just, I love them. So I'm not going to read you the back because it's in French, but essentially it's about a magician named Prospero who has a slave named Césaire. No, he has a slave named Caliban. And his slave is revolting. And so I'm very, very excited about reading this. Definitely a very, very, very short book. So I probably should be able to read it in a day anyway, but I chose this because the character um, Caliban is definitely different than me since I'm not a slave, I'm not black, I'm not Caribbean, etc. So, excited. Five, read a book completely outdoors. So for that, I have also chosen Une Tempête by Aimé Césaire. I think that this is definitely some short enough that I could read it entirely outdoors. I don't know how much time I will have during that week to read outdoors or what the temperature will be. It's kind of hot, as you can tell. Um, but I do plan on reading this entirely outdoors. Number six, read a book you bought because of the cover. For that, I chose A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. Now, I have tried reading some of his short stories, the Dubliners, in the Dubliners collection. Um, they were okay, but I definitely chose this for the cover. And I've heard that this is a very readable Joyce. So we'll see. Um, the cover, the portrait, of Keith Henderson in Black Hood. And the artist is Maxwell Ashby Armfield. Hopefully you can hear that through the birds. Whatever that is. Is that a bird? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's read the back. The novel is a highly autobiographical account of the adolescence and youth of Stephen Dedalus, who reappears in Ulysses, and who comes to realize that before he can become a true artist, he must rid himself of the stultifying effects of the religion, politics, and essential bigotry of his background in late 19th century Ireland. So, this sounds fun. And it's, it's not too long, so I think this should be readable. And then, the seventh challenge is to read seven books. So there's two more books I need to talk about. There's Dom Juan by Molière. Molière was a 17th century playwright for Louis XIV at Versailles. He wrote a number of comedies, which I love comedies. Um, and this is his adaptation of the story of Don Giovanni, which you might have heard of because Mozart actually wrote an opera about Don Giovanni. And Don Giovanni is said or at least he claims to have seduced 1,003 women in Spain. He has a squire in the Mozart opera. He's called Leporello, but here his name is Scanerel, I believe. Um, I'm not gonna read it in the back. It's also in French, um, but I really look forward to reading this. It's very short. I think it should be fun. And finally, Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky in the Pavir and Volkonsky translation. I tried reading Brother Karamazov a couple years ago. I was reading it and I was really enjoying it, but I think it was the translation. It was the Constant Garnet translation, which is in the public domain. And I was having a lot of problems with the translation, but I've heard that these translators are really, really good. And so I thought I would start with his shorter book, Notes from Underground. Whoops, sorry about that. I forgot to read the back. Let's read the back together, shall we? I am a sick man. I am a wicked man. 
With this sentence, Fyodor Dostoevsky began one of the most revolutionary novels ever written, a work that marks the frontier not only between 19th and 20th century fiction, but between two centuries' visions of the self. For the unnamed narrator of Notes from Underground is a multiplicity of selves, each at war with the others, all at war with everything else. Talk about a book that deals with existential questions. I am really excited. I, I really want to like Dostoevsky, so I'm hoping that this book will do the trick. So let me know what you are reading, if you've read any of these. And so I'm looking forward to this readathon. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.